Hey, what's up folks? Pastor Rob, I hope that you're having a fantastic day. As we get ready to restart our God's Word for You Today series over the next couple of episodes, we're going to be continuing to tackle some difficult issues, but before we get to those, I want to start off by introducing you to a new product put out by Lifeway for the Christian Standard Bible called the Old Testament and New Testament Handbooks. I think that these will be a great resource for anybody who wants to get deeper into the Word of God. Yes, they work better with the CSB translation. However, they will work with any other translation. There are just certain features that will be limited if you're not using the CSB. But I want to show these to you, so be sure to stay tuned as we uh, take a look at them and see what we can learn about them. So here we have the first one. This is the <clears throat> sorry. This is the Old Testament handbook put out by Lifeway. As you can see, it comes in a nice cloth overboard hardback cover. It has the Old Testament handbook and then on the side the Old Testament handbook, CSB logo, Holman. They actually have uh, some pretty nice ribbons too. I'm just gonna get in the shot here. Pretty nice ribbons if you are wanting to mark your spot. But what makes these really kind of cool is they provide a lot of background information to the books of the Bible. So as you're doing your personal Bible study and as you're going through, you'll find that you're able to have a pretty impressive um, Bible study. And they come in a couple of different colors. But here you see Old Testament handbook open it up and you have a table of contents, you have a letter from the publishers, God's timely and inspired word, but then you get into um, the uh, actual material itself. One of the things I want to comment on this is the paper is kind of glossy. It's it's like a, a tabloid paper. Um, and I know it's, you can see the light reflecting off of the camera light. But one of the things I like about it is these have a lot of color to them and they just kind of pop off the page. And so it tells you here about how inspiration works and how the Bible came to be. Uh, breaks down the Old Testament into the Torah, the prophets, and the writings, or the Torah, the Navim, the Ketuvim. And then you get into Genesis, and you're, you're met with these beautiful color pages. Uh, each book gives you an introduction to the author, the background, the message and purpose, the summary, and the structure. I'll see if I can zoom in here so you can see that. Yeah, there we go. So you can see you got author, background, message and purpose, a summary of the book, and a structure. Zoom back out here. And then you also, with each one, you get then an outline of the book along with word studies. Now this is where this is really kind of cool. There are certain words throughout the scriptures that carry theological importance. And a lot of times we miss the importance of those words as they are translated into English. So for example, in the book of Genesis, three of the, the key words, theologically speaking, are zera, which is translated in the CSB seed or offspring. There's uh, erotes, which is land. Um, and then there's para, which is be fruitful. And so these are three of the key words throughout um, the book of Genesis that play an important part and it tells you other translations that are used for other words, how that word's translated in other parts here. It gives you focus passages, uses in the old Genesis. So for example, the word Zerah or seed appears 59 times in the book of Genesis alone and 229 times in the Old Testament. So you get an outline of the books, you get a word study, and then when you flip the page here, you get a timeline of the book, a breakdown of creation day by day, then you get the early covenants, you get the directives to Adam and Noah, you get correlations between Noah and Jesus, you get salvation through judgment here, kind of connecting how God saves through floods and through judgment. Then you get a map of Abraham's migration, you get birthrights and blessings, a little explanation on, on the difference there between those two things. And then you get into family trees of Abraham. And it goes into dreams in Genesis, a path to reconciliation between Jacob and Joseph and how, they, how their lives play out kind of in a mirror image of one another, but opposite. 
and you see the promises of, Je of Genesis. And then they have this cool section here, which is seeing Jesus in Genesis, where it takes New Testament passages like Romans and lines it up with um, the stories in Genesis. So it's just, it's just a really cool little book that helps to kind of label things out. Uh, it has character studies. It breaks down somebody's life. For example, Joseph's lives, you know, 17 years with his family, 13 years in prison, 80 years with authority in Egypt. And then you get into Exodus, rinse and repeat. you got a beautiful title page. You've got an introduction. And you just, you just work your way through, uh, through the books of the Bible with a lot of great maps. Break down the plagues and the gods they were against, the Ten Commandments, all of this, the layout of the tabernacle, uh, information about Moses' life, the Ten Commandments throughout Scripture, seeing Jesus in Exodus. This is a common thing, by the way, in the Old Testament handbook, is seeing Jesus, the, the correlations between Jesus and stories in the Old Testament, how they serve as types. And, I mean, this is, this is just a great thing, I would think, to add to your library. Sure, there are parts of it, like you see here, how it's translated in the CSB, um, and how many times it's worded, and what other trans translation choices are made in the CSP. Those, yes, are specifically geared to the CSB, but you really could you you really could use this with any translation of the Bible. I think it would be a great addition to your library for the Old Testament one. Um, and then it even does key verses here. Uh, so this is a key verse, a key passage of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 4, 32-40, Deuteronomy 5, 1-4. Um, so, I mean, these are just great things. And the Shema here in chapter 6, Jesus' quotes of Deuteronomy. Now, this is something that's really cool, too. In this, it shows you where Jesus quoted these passages in the New Testament. So that helps you better understand the New Testament by better understanding how the Old Testament relates to it. One of the things I think we often struggle with in our study of Scripture is we, we kind of separate the Old Testament and the New Testament from one another, and we really shouldn't do that. The best way for us to understand the New Testament is to have a good understanding of the Old Testament. So that's really what this book does. Every, every book has a different kind of color scheme to it to help you differentiate between it. Um, you know, one of the, I don't know about you, but one of the things I see people get most confused about is the difference between God, uh, between Elijah and Elisha. And here it's got a nice little chart that breaks down those two, those two individuals. But it takes you all the way through the Psalms, Proverbs, the Old Testament. Every, every page is just stunning. It gives you timelines, charts, all kinds of useful information for the background. Helps you break down the books. And then you get to the end of it. And then it gives you, uh, here at the end, it gives you literary parallels between the minor prophets which i think is really kind of cool and then it lists all of the sources that are there um, basically what they did is they took several different references several different resources that they put out and the information contained in those including their study bible and they combined it into one volume for the old testament and one volume for the new testament so that's the old testament handbook and like i said it's a, it's beautiful it comes in a this kind of sandy color which i i really like and then it came in, um, I want to say, some kind of uh, darker, like, charcoalish color. I wasn't a big fan of that. I really liked the sandy color. Um, and then, but they also put out one for the New Testament as well. And that's what I have right here. This is the New Testament handbook. And you can see mine's kind of this grayish color with a kind of a dark bluish green uh, ribbon. And you open up, you get the same thing. You got the color end pages which match the ribbon and then you get into it and you got table of contents letter from the publishers all all that junk uh, that isn't everything but they talk about uh, how the new testament here in this first one is fulfilled in the old testament or how the sorry how the old testament is fulfilled in the new testament and then you get in here and you got matthew you've got again author background message and purpose summary structure uh purpose key purpose here so like Matthew, Gospel, Genre, Gospel, Historical Narrative. Jesus is the Messiah, the true offspring of Abraham, the son of David in exile. It was promised in the Israel Scriptures. So Matthew is writing to Jews and trying to persuade them of the Gospel of Jesus Christ. So this is going to show where this is very much focused on those Old Testament imageries uh, for the purpose of citing and making those connections. So you've got, again, word studies, you've got the time of Abraham to Jesus, you've got Herod's family tree, 
You've got Jesus' discourses in Matthew, so this lists out all of his sermons in the Gospel of Matthew and their purpose. This lists out all the miracles of Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew. This lists out the Jewish, talks about the Jewish sects in the New Testament. So you got the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Zealots, the Herodians, and what they believed. Um, references both Old and New Testament, they talk about this kind of group forming their activities. You've got the disciples of Jesus listed um, with their um, with the parallel accounts here. You got prophecies fulfilled by Jesus in the New Testament. You got hearing the Old Testament, New Testament. Here again, you have connections between the Old Testament and the New Testament. And then Christ is prophet. Um, talks about how he's a prophet. Then you've got Jesus as God, his deity proclaimed in the Gospel of Matthew. Note this: this is just the deity of Christ as proclaimed in the Gospel of Matthew. Uh, you got hearing the Old Testament and the New Testament again, seeing the prophecies. Then Christ as King, some charts here to help explain that. Jesus is suffering, parables of the kingdom. Then you get into Mark. Mark's word study outlines places that Jesus went. Mark's timeline. Passion Week breakdown uh, cross connections between Psalm 22 and Mark 15. Here in the Old Testament, the New Testament, the miracles of Jesus in the Gospel, Mark. Jesus' ministry, Jesus' ministry in Jerusalem with temples and maps and all that stuff. Then you get into Luke, same stuff, where you've got outlines, word studies, birth of Jesus. You've got a bunch of maps, first century Roman world, Jesus' early childhood, Luke's timeline, angelic announcements in the Gospel of Luke, uh, the work of the Spirit, John the Baptist's life, Jesus' exaltation, Messiah as king, Christ as priest, you get into John's introduction here, and you can see word studies. Ego am I, we've talked about this, where that's the I am statement. Uh, logos, pastua, which is belief or faith. Um, John's timeline, eternal life in John's writings. The great I am statements, the witness of Jesus' resurrection. And, I mean, the list just goes on and on. We could, we could go through this thing indefinitely. The book of Acts, you know, Paul's missionary journeys, the promises of Acts. The doctoral emphasis in Paul's epistles. I mean, this is just a great resource for you to add to your library to better help you understand Scripture. The other big thing about the purpose behind these were these were specifically designed to be beautiful. And I know you're probably hearing that and going, well, that's kind of a, a matter of opinion. But no, in all seriousness, they were designed to look nice so that they could sit on your table your coffee table or sit on a bookshelf or sit on your dining room table as something when you have people over who are perhaps maybe not believers they were designed specifically with an aesthetic purpose to be something that grabs people's attention and the reason why they did that is they want this to be a table piece <clears throat> not only that helps you grow in the Lord and better understand scripture but also they wanted it to be something that attracts the attention of people coming in your house. So maybe they will ask questions, well, what is that? And it gives you an opportunity to talk about the scriptures, to talk about Jesus Christ. If you don't have something like this, I would strongly encourage you to pick them up. They're about 40 bucks a piece. You probably can find them on Amazon cheaper. Church, I hope this has been helpful. God bless. We'll talk to you later.